Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice and to My Choice Tuesday. I've been wanting to sprinkle in a few more musical cultures into this channel. And so one of your recommendations in particular has been intriguing me. It's the Wagaki Band. And when doing a little bit of research on them, I found out that they combine traditional Japanese musical instruments with rock and metal. And that sounds really cool. So we're going to listen to them for the first time today. And in particular, the thing that really tipped it over that choosing scale is that in this live performance, they feature Amy Lee from Evanescence, who is amazing. So today we're going to be listening to their live performance of Senban Sakura, which translates to a thousand cherry blossoms. Let's get to it. awesome. Yep. It's awesome. It's fun. I love it. Okay. Going back here. Woo. <laughs> want to talk really briefly about that singing style. So um, the, the way she's keeping it essentially really far forward in the face has to do with a lot of the space that she has back here. And so it sounds to me like she has a lot of narrow spacing essentially. Um, and that causes the sound to focus very, very, very far forward. We hear a lot of essentially uh, twang in the sound actually, which is weird because you think of twang sometimes as country, but I would say that this sound in particular has even more twang than a lot of country does. Lots of amazing agility in her voice as well. Wow, really, really fun. And I love the way that it it sounds fun. It just sounds fun. Like all of these instruments sound like they're ready to rock out and like go on like a gallop together. It's fun, it's just fun. Or maybe that's because I really like anime possible. toe touches on stage, they're just doing skipping on stage. These guys are having a great time performing. Obviously, uh, the fan routine is very important. I remember um, I when I studied in China at one point, we were talking about like the importance of fan language in Chinese opera, and I'm sure that there's some sort of uh, fan importance that she has here as well. I don't know what it is, but I think there's got to be some sort of signing or reason for it. Um, and uh, I like the way when she's down in her lower voice, it does get a little more of that airiness in it. It sounds like essentially the sound gets a little more width overall, whereas before you had a very, very narrow pharyngeal space for sure. Uh, I want to go back a little bit. This is so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. 
there's a very interesting style of vibrato that happens in here as well, where they'll do a really quick vibrato um, that it feels um, more manufactured than a lot of vibrato that we think of as, you know, your natural, um, often a little bit slower vibrato. It's almost, it almost feels like a trill in the way that they approach it. And that it is uh, very quick. So the frequency of that vibrato is going to be very fast. It is it is not particularly wide here, but this style of vibrato sometimes is done in a really, really wide way, meaning that it can go like up a full step and down a whole step. So this, hers sounds like it was a little more narrow than that. And even when they're singing together, they were coordinating those moments of vibrato. So they would say like, we're gonna sing straight here and then right here, we're gonna do vibrato together. So it's very specific. It isn't the kind of vibrato that you would hear in classical music where you're trying to essentially sustain vibrato most of the time. This one is just like vibrato right here. Cool. <laughs> And right there is a great example of when she took that vibrato and made it a lot wider, right? So before you've heard her do ones that were more like maybe a quarter of a step, maybe a half step, but this one sounded like it was much wider. Oh, I love that kind of involvement. Uh, also, look at this instrument signed up. You've had this beautiful selection of acoustic and electronic instruments. And I love this, uh, this crossover here. I also love that they have a whole orchestra behind them. It's got so many fun sounds in it. It's cool. <laughs> interesting the part of the reason the melody is sticky is because they'll sing the first part of this chorus so in the first line they'll sing the first part go up first part again is repeated essentially and then it goes down a little bit then first part goes up a little bit and then they do something different um and a lot of times when you see really sticky melodies you'll have that thing where they'll repeat it a couple different times maybe slightly differently somewhere in there and then do something different so i'll go through that here. Oh, let's go back a little bit. That's right where it was. Here we go. One. Goes up. Two. Goes down. Three. Goes up. And then something different. It's a good composition technique. And then again, because it's fun. <laughs> I am not super well versed in Japanese instruments, so but I want from you. Uh, and bonus points to whoever gets all of these instruments first is tell me all of the traditional instruments that are in this video. Please somebody write that in the comments. 
And uh, whoever gets that first, hopefully we're gonna get tons and tons of thumbs up. And we're gonna give you a shout out sometime on our community page, okay? For getting all of these instruments right and helping to educate me on what all of these are. I think it is so cool that we are featuring uh, traditional Japanese instruments and essentially a rock song. It's like, it's, it's just blasting away. And then they are rocking out on acoustic instruments. This is so, so cool. I love, um, I love this crossover. I love it when we see awesome things work with other awesome things and create even more awesomeness together. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, no, I lied. Let's go back. I want more of this instrument awesomeness. Uh, here. She's even dressed, it looks like in a kimono as well. So we've got some really cool costuming going. I like the way their voices are sounding together. They both have sort of a lower uh, Yuko, who is our lead singer here. Um, she's got, she can go higher, but she's getting gonna get a much more focused and narrow tone. When she's a little bit lower, she has a little more focus in her sound than Amy does here. Amy has a much more mellow sound. And the two of them together, they sound... Like they're fun and conversational in the first few moments. Let's go back and catch that entrance. <laughs> and I will say really briefly here, this, uh, this keeps going and going and going and going and the breath control on it, it's difficult. It's difficult. Where do you breathe in that? Um, and Yugo seems to be doing a pretty good job handling that overall. Sometimes the breath gets a little bit loud for my taste. I like it to be a little bit quieter, but you can also argue that hearing the breath helps to continue to carry that energy at times. So it could go either way. And uh, I definitely feel like, wow, the ability to keep going in these phrases over and over that keep going and going and going. She's the little engine that could for sure. That's that's cool. I love Harry Amy's line in there. Uh, there's a really beautiful um, slower line that she's singing underneath. It has um, it has a groundedness to it that is contrasting the Yuko's line that's up on top, and she's doing a lot more of that really rapid vibrato I was talking about. It's more like it's more like an ornamentation than vibrato in a lot of ways to my ears, and it is definitely um, manufactured. So we're talking about like not the kind of vibrato that comes from a, a natural, uh, a sort of a natural lease of antagonizing muscles. But this is the kind of vibrato that is like, oh no, I'm gonna actually shake things a little bit so that I can get this vibrato at a certain rate that I really want that's gonna be a lot faster. And uh, it's very stylized. Boop, let's go back a little bit and listen to that. That was a cool, really cool section. <laughs> That's pretty together.
Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is an orchestra holding out a note as if they were a metal band. It's hilarious. It's, it's really good. Let's hear them do that again. Normally, orchestras wouldn't, maybe they would linger on a note and do like an off like that, but... Uh, there's a, they would hold it in a different way and they would like maybe have a little more tremolo at the end. And instead this one's like, no, we're going to wait for those drums. <laughs> oh, they do have some tremolo going. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. That's just a great combo. I didn't know it, but I think the world needs way more of traditional Japanese instruments and metal slash rock. I'm not sure where within that. I think it's more in the metal genre. So metal, Japanese instrument metal. It's just fun. And part of the funness is the energy of all of those performers on stage, right? I love that. the jumping is really fun. The spinning, the twirling, they are having a blast. And so their audience is having a blast too. You can even tell the conductor is having a blast. It's just so much fun. I love that they've taken things from both of the genres and really clearly mixed them together. It's not just in the instrumentation, but it's in how they're being played. The solo lines and the instruments, they felt like it could have been taken from a, a metal instrumental interlude. And it felt more metal to me than even a virtuosic violin concerto. And then on top of that, you have these moments where the drums are interacting with the orchestra there at the end. That was so much fun. I loved, loved that cutoff at the end. And then it was interesting to hear Amy Lee's vocals, which could be considered more classical in nature because of the way she's sustaining the line. And then you hear Yuko's vocals up on top with that more stylized uh, ornamentation. It was really cool. Very, very cool to hear how they blended all of these things together in a way that just made you want to rock out with them. So thank you everyone for this recommendation. This was just fun. It was fun. I think my smile muscles hurt. I'm getting tired. Uh, if you would like to make more recommendations, I suggest doing that down in the comment section of this video. That's where we look for your recommendations and track them the most. So go ahead and make those recommendations there or come and say hello to me sometime. Uh, I'm here every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time. So you can come and say hello during our live premieres. We have a cool chat place where we talk about the premiere as it's going and there are no ads, right? Bonus! You can also find me on Patreon and at thecharismaticvoice.com. I'll see you guys somewhere soon. And thanks again. Mm -hmm.